Hello everyone, God bless you all. This is Apostle Kim Munis with Lion of Judah International Ministries. Just wanted to come on really quick and share with you something that I have been studying on in the book of Acts chapter 3, uh, chapter 4 in Acts, and chapter 9 in Acts. It's talking about um, healing, deliverance. We're talking about Peter and how he was ministering to um, the man who was begging for alms at the uh, temple gate. Let's read, let's read Acts chapter 3 really quick. It says in Acts chapter 3 verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together into, into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of the temple. S who, seeing Peter and John about to go to the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. Listen to this. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Um, I want you to pay close attention to a verse, verses 6 and verses 7 and verses 8. And it says, And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all of the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. So there's much more to this in its entirety. It goes to verse 26. and and But I want to share something with you really quick instead of giving the man natural things which uh he was accustomed to begging at at the gate of the temple as a matter of fact people brought him to the temple gate to the to the uh temple uh to ask for alms they he was right at the very beginning right at the entry of the gate or of the temple called beautiful, begging for alms. Uh, we would call that a panhandler or uh, someone who was just asking for money. So that's what he was doing uh, at the gate. So he was lame from his mother's womb. So this infirmity was not something that just happened overnight, not due to a car accident or anything. From his mother's womb, he was cursed with a spirit of infirmity, okay? And so all of this man's life, uh, obviously he was not working because he was begging for alms. He was struggling in his body. He was unable to stand. He had no strength in his ankles. There was no support uh, internal support on his spine so he could not stand his legs his ankles had no strength now I want you to see that right quick talking about uh, your skeletal system your skeletal system is what supports the body okay get, get, get a clue with that your skeletal system is what supports the body and so instead of the, giving the man natural things which would have been temporary, he gave him exactly what he needed. And that was a supernatural encounter with the power of God. 
This supernatural encounter caused the man to be made whole, caused him to stand, caused him to praise God, caused him to, to have faith. It brought joy. It caused him to be a witness. It caused the glory of God to be magnified among the people. It caused him to be a witness. It caused, it stimulated a revival in the land. Hallelujah. It prompted a spirit of evangelism. Also, as a side note, I just have to bring this out. It also brought upon uh, and this is later on in, in chapter four, you can see as a result of, of God using Peter in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it brought persecution, okay? It brought persecution, okay? So it also brought an increase. This one act, this one supernatural encounter that this man had, uh, uh, a miracle healing uh, uh, in this man's body brought an increase in the body of Christ. I think it was about about five thousand, three to five thousand people that were made to be believers because Peter operated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit because Peter was exactly in the place where he should have been for God to move in his life, to demonstrate the supernatural power of God. It was a, a divine encounter. You see, all the while, this man sat at the gate. He sat at the temple, hallelujah, in need. And people were passing by, no doubt, the, 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 the religious leaders may have dropped a few coins in his basket, may have, may have uh, blessed him with some food, or somebody may have given him some clothes, but that is not what the man needed to stand on his own. You see, this miracle healing that he received in his body caused strength to come, where he was able to stand on his own two feet. Hallelujah. He was supported in his body. His ankles received strength. He was supported in his own body. So then from there, because he was made whole, physically whole, his whole entire mindset changed. And because his mindset changed, what, what do you think would have happened next? He would have been able to, to go to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He would have been able to support himself. So not all the time, friends, I'm speaking to you ministry leaders in particular and those who are witnesses for the, the Lord, those of you who are laboring. When you encounter people in the field, when you encounter people, they may be begging alms, but truly what they need is a supernatural encounter of God. Just one supernatural encounter by God using you in the gifts of Holy Spirit, whether it be through prophecy, whether it be through rows of wisdom, whether it be through rows of knowledge, whether it be a laying on of hands so that they can receive healing in their body, will cause an individual to rise up, hallelujah, and move forward in their natural and spiritual lives. You see, the man went on praising God. The word of God says he received strength. Hallelujah. And we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. So he had joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had faith. I want you to pay attention to verse 7. Verse 7 in particular. This this really stuck out to me. Verse seven, it says, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. There's something specific about giving the right hand. Okay. Uh, there's something specific 
is prophetically uh, uh, significant about giving the right hand. The right hand symbolizes the strength of God or long life. Okay? It symbolizes strength and long life. Okay? Get that. I'm going to show you how. Look at Acts chapter chapter 9 verse 41. When Peter um, was ministering to the woman uh, Tabitha, uh, Dorcas, when he was ministering to this woman, he also stretched his hand out. He gave the right hand and this woman received life. She was resurrected. So this is a side note. This is a prophetic uh, a gesture. And it's implement or it's implicated in the Bible. That right hand is prophetically significant for long life. It's prophetically significant for the strength of God. Okay? It's prophetically significant to long life and the strength of God. Hallelujah. You, you, you think about when you give, uh, when people come into your ministries, your churches or whatever to, to become a part of, of them. What do we give them? We, we call it uh, the right hand of fellowship. So it's welcoming them in. It's welcoming them in to the family of God, so to speak. I don't know how they say it in, in some ministries, but it's welcoming them in to the family of God, extending the eternal life of fellowship by shaking of the right hand, welcoming them in with the right hand of fellowship. Praise God. So it also symbolizes the strength of God. Praise God. So there's strength in the right hand, extending the right hand. So I just wanted to come on with that. You know, friends, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to move out in the supernatural power of God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because it is not your power. It's God's power that you're operating or that you're demonstrating in the earth realm. One thing I loved about Peter, I loved about Peter reading the book of Acts and, and seeing uh, how God used him, but he never took the glory for himself. He always gave glory to God. He always gave glory to God and what God was doing uh, in the lives of the people. Praise God. He always gave glory. He did not rob God of his glory, the glory and the honor that was due him. Amen. Okay, friends, that's all I have to say. I hope this blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. Um, if you would like, stay connected with us via our ministry email, via our Facebook page at Lion of Judah International Ministries. Um, you can find us on Facebook. You can also email for prayer requests, speaking engagements, what have you, at lojministry1 at gmail.com. L-O-J, ministry, the number one, at gmail.com. If you're in need of healing or deliverance, we'll be more than happy to pray for you. Just give us a shout out via email or inbox us on Facebook, okay? Until then, friends, Dios te bendiga. Chao, chao.